gentlemen, please welcome the master of mayhem, Craig Charles. You know, when our robots fight, they just on four things. Damage, how much do they destroy? Aggression, how much do they want to destroy? Style, do they destroy with panache and control? Are they destroying what they're meant to destroy? Are you picking up a theme here? Then, that's what you're in for. Are you ready to rock? Yeah! Jonathan, who's up for it this week? Let's break. What a great night to be settled around the war zone or up here in the crow's nest. We've got some superb robots for you. Let's see how they line up in round one. First up, world champions Razor. They've never won the UK title against newcomers Big Nipper. Something against Widow's Revenge. Wait till you see them. Accident could burst the destructor bubble and suicidal tendencies meet Rick. Well, of course, Jonathan, the current world champion Razor has to be a favourite in this heat. But... Word in the pits, not that I'm one to gossip, you understand, is that they have serious opposition in female form. Who else is in the heat? Eco-robotic warriors something return with improved power and a weapon that can cause some serious damage, so they say. But they've never really proved themselves in the arena, with durability being their main shortcoming, proved in their second round battle against Mousetrap in the Fourth Wars. Destructor Bubbles back, as ridiculous as ever. And perhaps Razor's only real threat is suicidal tendencies. They've learned a lot of lessons over three years in competition, and that's why they're ranked 21st. And Razor themselves. Painful, lethal, terrifying. Need I say more? Anyway, as I was saying, just to fill you in on the gossip, Widow's Revenge, that's what we're all talking about, because that team is made up of the Razor Boys partners. They were all so fed up of never seeing their husbands and boyfriends that they thought, we'll get together and build a robot of our own. That way, A, we might get to spend some time with our other halves, and B, we might beat them. So, let's hope they do. First up, though, Razor is against Big Nipper. Say bye-bye to Mr. Nice. Let the wars begin! From Bournemouth, Razor. Tart bird, tart reptile, the new self-running mechanism, unique. They also have a larger front scoop now, and the famous crushing beak is even more powerful. From Cone, Big Nipper. A W team, crushing and lifting beetle like jaws, should raise and turn over opponents, they hope. Also has titanium spikes, a top speed of 10 miles an hour, four wheel drive, no experience though. Roboteers, stand by. The Big Nipper hopefuls, Harold and Mark Lum and Graham Dawson and Razor, of course. Simon Scott, Ian Lewis and Vinnie Blood. Dead metals in the arena for the house robots, the pincer, the saw, the synergy between. And shunt, perhaps more brutal with the scoop and the diamond edged axe. Three, two, one, activate. Razor there on the left hand side. Very quick start, but something has been broken on that initial onslaught on the big nipper. It's part of the self riding mechanism that has flown away from Razor. Beset by mechanical problems in the UK Championships, the reigning world champions have never won the domestic title. Now they're trying to claw their way back into this fight, causing destruction to Big Nipper, biting their way through. But there you can see flailing, useless now, part of that unique self-writing mechanism. When you see Razor at its best, with a flourish in its performance, it is spellbinding. Big Nipper trying desperately to get away. Well, if you crush a beetle, it rains and rains and rains. And punishment raining down on Big Nipper now from Razor. Hoisting them into the air. Look at that slicing in. Big Nipper onto the flames to burn out what electrical control they have left, slamming down 
Well, the nipper is big on resolve, if nothing else. One of its beetle-like jaws has been buckled upwards. Razor on the attack, and this is a very good and therefore very surprising first battle for Razor. I thought they'd stroll this against the new boys. So all credit to Graham Dawson at the controls of Big Nipper and Mark Lum at the weapons. Onto the angle grinder at the side of the arena. The sparks fly. Big Nipper drives back on the Razors, the heavier of the two machine. Razor's weight actually kept down by all those perforations you can see there. It's deliberate, it's not some mechanical mistake. Out comes Shunt with a push. Dead metal in there as well. Down comes the beak of this part bird, part reptile. They think it's the coolest machine in the world, Simon Scott, Ian Lewis and Vinnie Blood. Boys, you would. They shove it against the, against the scoop of Shunt there. It being Big Nipper, oh, and Shunt's diamond edge at the hardest material there is, slicing into Big Nipper. So that allows Razor to release its own beat. You've been nipped. You have been nipped in the bud, more like, for Big Nipper. And Razor, despite the damage, and they'll need work in the pits, go through. But it wasn't with the flourish we expected. Big Nipper. Count it out, cease. The Razor Boys celebrate. Well, Big Nipper, what an unfortunate robot. It gave such a good account of itself, but it came up against the claw of the mighty Razor. The winner is Razor! Well, you know you were in a fight there. We certainly were, weren't we? Straight. He came out straight at you. Yeah. Yeah. Really hard, didn't he? he hit you really hard. Yeah. You could feel the, the, the right. scaffolding shaking. Yeah. Your, your self right arm. Yeah. It's it's disintegrated. Right. And I thought, yeah. oh, they're going to do it to me <laughs> again. It took us a while to realise what had come off. We thought, is it a bit of them? Is it a bit of... Oh, no! Oh, big nipper. What a robot. Well, Tough man, machine, yeah. wasn't it? Great. Tough machine. Give us a hard fight. But it was a good fight. I, I, I bet he's gutted, though. You know, yeah. he's you know, imagine coming up against you. I mean, anyone else, he, he might have taken them apart. And he's yeah. hardly driven at all, but I think he drove brilliantly. Yeah. Okay. No, that's that's well. big praise yeah. for them. That's their yeah. first they war. Did very well. Excellent well. done. The first time of effort. Brilliant. Yeah. Are you going to do it this year? Well, we'll either do it or we'll just bust it. Oh, come on. You've got to try it. I want to see you in the final, at least. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for the mighty. Razor! Razor, as expected, going through, but not in an expected way. Big Nipper out next up something and watch for Widow's Revenge. From Nutley, Widow's Revenge. Wives and girlfriends of the Razor team, the Robot Widows came together and built a robot as a revenge for lonely nights, endless tea runs, bacon sandwiches and having to put up with hours of techno babble. They described this as a fridge on wheels with a rolling pin weapon. From Leicester, something. They say this is an ecologically sound robot powered by four recycled 800-watt car starter motors. It has a multi-purpose hydraulic system, a crusher axe lifter and top speeds of 20 miles an hour. The fastest in the heat. Roboteers, stand by. The Widow's Revenge team, Jilly Blood, Emily Cathcart, Fiona Mason and their Dig and Jeff Germany of something. Sir Kilowatts in the arena, Eco Warrior. Are you sure? He doesn't mind what he crushes and recycles. Shunt with a diamond edge axe and scoop. Hardly has a conscience either. Three, two, one. Widow's Revenge have also advertised their machine as extremely attractive, slim, and would like to meet a similar robot for Cozy Nights in. Uh, well, something has no plans for a Cozy Night in, I can tell you. With the circular blades at the front driving up. That blade system is also a, a crusher, a lifter, and the rolling pin there you see on Widow's Revenge is actually a kinetic spinning weapon. And part scoop as well, something on the attack, slamming down. 98 kilos of machinery there. It is the uh, lighter, only slightly. It certainly is the quicker. Chili Blood 
Vinny's misses at the controls of Widow's Revenge with Emily Cathcart and Fiona Mason and doing a good job too. At the moment, broadside on to something. They invited an attack which didn't come from something. Now, I wonder if Dick and Jeff Germaini have missed a trick there, but they press the pit release and Widow's, you need to get out of the way now very quickly. Has something gone wrong with something? I think it has. And if the widow sense here, they can come in for the kill as the clock ticks down to a judge's decision. Six. Will the mascara run in the widow's revenge team if they get the decision against them? Both robots labouring towards the end there. We're going to have to go to our esteemed judges. They'll be looking at style, control, damage and aggression. Well, something the more aggressive early on, but no damage caused or sustained by either machine. The Widow's Revenge driving quite neatly around the arena. In underneath, again, it was tentative. A spark or two. That was the main damage caused in the whole fight. Will that count against something? The winner. The judges have decided unanimously. And it's Widow's Revenge! <laughs> Why is your robot called Widow's Revenge? Well, basically, um, we are robot widows. Our other half's built Razor, and they've spent about the last three years in the shed. <laughs> so we decided that one of our mottos was going to be, if you can't beat them, join them, and then beat them. <laughs> How long have you been in the shed, building this one? About six months. Yeah. Did they give you any help? Maybe just touch the old verbal, you know, but nothing really practical. We just put ourselves, threw ourselves into it big time. Good luck, hope you go far, and um, I think you brighten up the competition no end. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ballistic, it's Widow's Revenge! <laughs> you were, hell hath no fury like a Widow's Revenge. Something beaten accident and destructor bubble next up. From Gisling am I, accident. A horizontal spinning double axe, hence the name. The 24 volt power comes from wheelchair and car fan motors. The body shell is 12 millimeter ply covered in perforated steel. This is an accident waiting to happen. From Nounsley, Destructor Bubble. The meter diameter sphere houses a steel chassis. New electronic eyes are shock activated. It was shocked early in the last series, beaten in its first battle. The weapon is a spike hammer powered by an old industrial floor scrubber motor. Roboteers, stand by. Mel Easton at the controls of accident. A newcomer to Robot Wars. And the destructive bubble team, Bill Cousins, his son Lawrence, and Peter Richards. And in the arena for the house robot circular lot. It is invincible, believe you me. And I think Shunt's pretty hard as well with the axe and the scoop. Three, two, one, Dead. I love the look of Destructor Bubble. All eyes, makeup and glam, but <laughs> how effective. Grappling hold to accident there. That's like being at a disco when the world's worst looking person grabs hold of you for a dance and you can't get away. I am that world's worst looking person, by the way. If you're having a disco, watch out. Uh, now, they're in trouble because they're trying to snog the ref bot, which isn't allowed in the rules, actually. So go away, Destructor Bubble, and fight accident. That's what you're there for. <laughs> a wink of the eyes. I really am not too sure whether those electronic eyes are shock activated, are they? Sparks from the arena side wall, but what has happened to accident? Has the winking and the blinking just confused us and blinded us to the fact that accident are going no further? Mel Easton, what's happened to your machine? You counted out! And the bubble rises! And it was an accident awaiting to happen! Hit, hit, hit! Well, Mel loves his Tiffany glass and his hopes like his glass about to be shattered. Because Accident and Mel Easton have crashed out of Robot Wars. Accident did have an accident with Shunt. The bubble hasn't burst on the truck, the bubble. They go through! How 
Sarge think you can go in this competition? There's a lot of big boys out there, you know. No, we'll go all the way. You think so? Um, you're very aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> That's what robot we're here for. I suppose. How long did it take um, you to put together this robot, and who thought of the design? This guy here is the chief. You're the chief. Yeah. And it's taken quite a long time. We were here last year, a bit slower. Yeah. But now we're fast. You are quite furious. nippy now, aren't we you? We are quite nippy now. And um, you, you really gave him a good kicking. Yeah. We did that quite well. He's uh, got a bit of push, a bit of grunt, and that weapon will get harder and harder. Harder and harder. This is what we like on Robot Wars. Mayhem, chaos, <laughs> wants and destruction. Let's hear it for Destructor Bubble. <laughs> The glamorous Destructor Bubble marches on. Goodbye to accident. Next up, Suicidal Tendencies and Rick. From Bretzel, Suicidal Tendencies. A tracked robot with front spikes, a lifter and axe crusher, 24 volt power, 10 miles an hour top speeds, fighting in its third wars, plenty of experience but never beyond the heat. Runs both ways up, slow though. Has an alloy body, polycarbonate shields at the rear and top. The weaponry, a powerful spinning disc at the back, and a pneumatic front flipper ram. Roboteers, stand by. Let's have a look at the suicidal tendencies team. Charlie Binns, Andrew Jeffrey and Ed Hoppit, and Rick there with Kevin Gallagher, his son Francis, and Ian, their friend. And Dead Metals in the arena has no friends. Has a pincer and a saw though. Junt has the axe, the scoop, the push. Three, two, one, activate. We have an intriguing battle ahead here. And suicidal tendencies just manoeuvring to get in behind Rick. Is that advised? Because you have there at the back the spinning disc to watch out for. Suicidal tendencies with the razor-esque beak churning down on Rick. Now, was there a little bit of superficial damage done to the Suicidal Tendencies front scoop? I don't think so. Interesting how many of these robots are now coming up with the beak-scoop combination attack method. And they've clawed on to the rear of Rick here, Suicidal Tendencies. The team of uh, Rick had been in Robot Wars before with Maverick in Series 4. They didn't get beyond the first round. Suicidal Tendencies are fighting in their third series of Robot Wars and now penetrating and puncturing the very top of Rick's armour. I think Rick is OK, turning away, coming on an attack again, but they are certainly worried. Suicidal tendencies driven by Charlie Binns, a technical consultant on the attack once more. He builds go-karts as well, so he's used to providing a wee bit of speed. Suicidal tendencies is just the quicker here. Rick is the slowest in the heat. Andrew Jeffrey there in the tendencies team. There's Charlie. And suicidal tendencies pushing Rick away. You can see one of the wheels spinning on Rick, but the other seems to be locked. And Suicidal Tendencies beat jaw, call it what you will, is locked into Rick now. And I don't think that alloy body or the polycarbonate shields can withstand too much more pressure. Francis Gallagher at the controls of Rick, he's just 11. And Rick on the flame pit, needs to get away from there. Now both wheels are now turning. The clock is ticking down and whatever happens to Rick, Francis, you've done well by staying in this battle. Suicidal tendencies have been the more aggressive for me. And that ultimately Cease. could prove the key. Well, suicidal tendencies look like it ruled the war zone, but both robots still mobile. We'll have to go to the judges while they're waking up their mind. Let's look at the highlights. I'll eat shunt piece by piece if Suicidal Tendencies doesn't get this decision. It caused more damage to Rick all the way through, was the more aggressive machine. This has to go to Suicidal Tendencies. I have my spanner ready, though, just in case. The judges are just making their mind up. Do you think you did any good? I did all right. Yeah. Not as good as we hoped to have done, but... Well, you know, your concerns have been justified because they've gone for suicidal tendencies!
looks like a Les Gibson guitar. It's the original Razor copy, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people have said that, yeah. yeah. We've still got the tracks, as always, though. Yeah, but um, your spike doesn't seem as powerful as, say, Razor's. No, it, it, I don't know what was happening. They've got, they've got some pretty good armour on that. I think it came from a, a warship or something. They were saying earlier, it's some special aluminium that's armoured. Yeah. It's a very tough robot. So, um, what about your chances? I don't know. I don't. Know. I haven't seen much of the robots that's in our heat this this war. But yeah. uh, so we'll see what happens. Well, your old hands. I mean, you should be good by at it by now, shouldn't you? <laughs> you think so? Wouldn't you? <laughs> you think so? Wouldn't you? Getting there slowly. <laughs> Getting there slowly. Getting there slowly. I'm sure you'll make it in the end, lads. Let's yeah. hear it. Suicidal tendencies. <laughs> No Robot Wars picnic for me. Suicidal tendencies through to the Heat K semi finals where they will meet Destructor Bubble. But first up, the one we've waited to see husbands against wives, Razor against widows, revenge. Well, some of the new robots look very, very good. Very, very dangerous in round one. Let's see if they can survive the Heat semi finals. made it through to fight not just any old battle, but to fight the battle that really matters against Razor. Husbands, wives, on a mission. <laughs> Now's your chance. Get it all out of your systems. What do you want to say to them? If we win, we're brilliant, and they leave the studios in shame. If they beat us, no more washing up, no more hot dinners on the table, and I'm putting his bed in the shed. <laughs> We become redundant housewives no, we'll from it. here in. <laughs> it matters. Up, it really that? matters watching up what's like. You'll soon know. <laughs> oh no. Really, you have got it all to play for, team. Well, well, you may be standing there smiling, pretending to be cocky, but actually, if you lose this, you will be the laughing stock, not just we of this room, like but the whole nation now and <laughs> forever. So, yeah. Okay, so basically, so what how you're are you feeling is, now? Well, we're, we're damned if we do and we're damned if we don't, aren't we? We're in uh -huh. a terrible situation, but that thing, I mean, look at it, it's like a fridge on wheels. I mean, what a joke. Hi, I'm Lady Jilly. I'm the team captain of the Robot Widows, and this is our robot, Widow's Revenge. Over to Madam Fifi. Hello, this is the ultimate in girly weaponry. We have our rolling pin here, and we have three specially carved out teeth for our opponents. Over to drive. I'm Mistress M. I'm going to be doing the driving. We hope to show the boys a thing or two. And our motto is... Revenge, Revenge is a rolling pin! I'm Simon Scott, Captain, Team Razor. I'm Ian Lewis, back with Razor, with new uh, thick bodywork, heavier front end, and much better transmission, much stronger. And I'm Vinnie Blood. We've still got this same awesome weapon, this awful hydraulic squeezer, three tons on that tip. Robotiers, stand by. Oh dear, we've never seen a team like it, thank goodness. And the Razor Boys. Matilda, whose side will she be on for a start? I think you can guess. So it could be the sergeant doing it for the boys. Who knows? Three, two, one. So let's be honest, Razor team. If you win, uh, you've got no homes to go to. It's your decision. Chasing on the Widow's Revenge. And the rolling pin. Revenge is a meal eaten cold, too. But Razor fears not and comes in crumpling. Now, somewhere underneath there, apparently, is a handy compact mirror, some tweezers, and uh, a little bit of lipstick in there somewhere. Oh! What's happening to Fifi and Madame Jilly and Madame M? Their robot's being trashed! by the puncturing beak of Razor. Oh, something flew off. The bit release button. 
sounds doom and gloom for Widow's Revenge. No quarter asked nor given. Divorce lawyers are on the phone. Widow's Revenge are on the flames. The housekeeping money will be used now to repair Widow's Revenge for months ahead, or will it? I think some new wardrobe could be uh, a good idea, boys. Oh, ball boy, weasel and potato features. That's what they think of the partners. The Red Bot counting Widow's Revenge down. Splendid Robot Wars entertainment. This is really what it's all about. Hatred. Razor in on the attack. In it goes again. And Widow's Revenge are out of it. In comes the sergeant. Now you should protect the gallant ladies, gallant sergeant. Matilda, what are you doing? Sisters of Mercy. The Widows are infuriated. Girl power, that certainly was from our Matilda. And the Widows come crashing back down to earth. I think they've actually done something to our fourth floor flipper there. They sort of wedged it open. Oh, Razor. There's nothing left of it. Be merciful. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. And this ungallant attack on Widow's Revenge gets the thumbs down, and quite rightly so. Well, I wonder if Fraser gave them any advice there on how to build a robot. If they did, it was sneaky. Very good against something early on, but now your robot is trash and is about to be binned, because I think your partners may have given you some duff advice. Matilda looks on. Oh, Razor! They've driven into the pit! The world champions, Razor, even though they drove into the pit, they go through! Do you think that was wise, what that um, was done? I think we're in big trouble, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you didn't take any prisoners there. It was a bit dodgy, wasn't it? I mean, that's stuff off. Uh, we're not for the hell of a bang, didn't I? I think there's still a bit in the uh, gantry there. Ladies, did, did you think they were a bit cruel to you there? I think they realise we're going to rebuild. They're going to help us by dismantling it. <laughs> piece by piece. <laughs> are you, um... Are you hooked on Robot Wars now? I mean, you know, you've got involved, you, you know, you sort of, like, show them some support. Got involved in their hobby. To be honest, our egos are even more inflated than theirs now. It's just an absolutely wonderful feeling. And they look at their faces, they just absolutely hate it. Well, it's fantastic. <laughs> a touch of fame is a wonderful thing. Um, do you think this is going to spill over into the marital home now? I, I think so. I've got plenty of time to rebuild that robot because no more hot dinners on the table for you, mate. <laughs> on a domestic level. The war continues on a domestic level. You hear it here. Widow's Revenge and Razor. Raise the roof. Hot news from the pit. Suicidal tendencies have been forced out because of motor problems. Rick reinstated to meet Destructor Bubble. Rick versus Destructor Bubble. It's an unusual looking robot, isn't it? Very much so. What do you think of it? It's going to be hard. Do you think it's just gimmicky, or do you think it can actually hurt you? I'll have to wait and see. You're doing the driving? Yeah. Who's doing the tactics? He is. OK, so you yeah. get all the blame? Yeah. Yeah? If it, it all goes from, wrong? I'm the man to kill. <laughs> OK. <laughs> all right, Destructor Bubble Team, what do you think of Rick? Oh, I think it should be a good robot. We hope he can flip us. Why? Because we haven't been flipped properly yet, so... <laughs> and you have a secret weapon? We have a secret weapon, yes, our hairnet hair is, is on. The hairnet hair is, is on. <laughs> well, there's a skip waiting at the other end, <laughs> whoever loses. Hi, I'm Francis, and this is my dad, Kevin, and this is my friend, Ian. And this is our robot, Rick. At the back, we have a spinny thin thing powered by a three kilowatt motor. And at the front, we have a flipper powered by a 250-pound pneumatic ram. And we're here to win. Hi, 
I'm Bill Cousins from Team Destructor Bubble. This is Peter Richards, Weapons Officer. Lawrence Cousins, my son, he's the driver. And this is Destructor Bubble. New and improved since last year. We have two 750 watt scrubber motors driving it and a weapon here which will actually rotate through 360 degrees. The weapon on the end is very painful. Let's have a look at the Rick team. Kevin Gallagher there waving. And the glam boys of Destructor Bubble. Hardly glamorous. Matilda's in the arena with her tusks. They're not pretty, are they? Well, you shunt's a bit of a looker, I've always felt, with a diamond-edged axe. So Rick given a second chance then because of the suicidal tennis's engine problems side by side with Destructor Bubble. Don't let Destructor Bubble fool you into thinking she's a bit of an airhead. Rick behind the bubble. It doesn't seem to be moving at all. Rick has pressed the release button. Shunt has come in with the axe. Destructor Bubble. Thus proving to be, yes, a bit of an airhead, is about to be pitted if it'll go down the pit. That is a one metre diameter sphere. Close encounters of the robot kind, it wasn't really. And it's now a bobbling bubble out there. And Francis Gallagher at the controls of Rick wants to push it a little bit extra onto Shunt. I don't think Shunt should be out there. That's not in the CPZ ref bot. A Shunt on the attack again. He's red carded. Shunt sent back to his corner. Red carded by the ref. He can't come out of the CPZ and have a go at our glamour like that. And Shunt's having a ruck here with the ref bot. A real argument ensuing. Poor old distractor bubble looks a little bit tattered and, and world weary and is about to be counted out. And Rick has made good use of his second chance. Destructor bubble going as far down into the pit as possible. And Rick through to the heat final. Well, Rick, another lucky Ray. They're reinstated, and now they're through to the heat final. Rick, go through! Oh, we think there's a major electrical failure. Right, and it proved that you're not so indestructible at all. And that's why we left the Inder off the front. We that's just it. went for the destructor bubble. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a very unusual robot, lovely design. Um, that, self, that arm works as a self writer as well. It would have done if the power was there. And it all. And all, there's no power. So it all went are, pants. It all went pants, but it was good. Your bubble's burst. Will you be back? I think so. All right then. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it! Destructor bubble! Well, we get to see this haircut again, don't we? Yeah. Um, talk me through it. You must be feeling really lucky. Yeah, very lucky. But now, you know, it looks like your looks run out because you know you're facing in the next round. Yeah. Who is it? Razor. Oh, dear. Now, that's going to be a completely different story, isn't it? How do you think you're going to take him on? I mean, have you got a strategy? Keep them running. Keep them running. What you mean is just keep running away, don't you? <laughs> Try and get through five minutes without too much damage. Maybe flip them if you can. Depends. Yeah. <laughs> Try and keep out of the way of the mighty claw, OK? Let's hear it for Rick! <laughs> so, Rick, go through. And they will meet the mighty Razor in the Heat K final. So, two robots have fought through to the bitter end, but Lord knows getting here wasn't easy. Not for Razor, taking damage in the first frontal assault on Big Nipper. Very unlikely, but we thought Razor were in trouble. They fought their way back, though. A bit of a slice. They were through. And, of course, next up, the wives and girlfriends and widows' revenge. And Razor took no prisoners. Now, Rick 
reinstated because suicidal tendencies had motor problems, then took advantage and beat Destructor Bubble with some help from Shunt Red Carded. Destructor Bubble pitted and Rick underdog in the final. Nothing spare in Lava and Robot Wars, but these guys are really, really nasty pieces of work. To walk all over your wives like that, to decimate their robot, just so that you can get into the semi-finals. Yeah, we're pretty bad, aren't we? You're pretty bad. And what do you think about the opposition now, well, Rick? I mean, that's a terrible thing. They've had to chain it up. It's so deadly. Are you being sarcastic? No, no. not at all. I hope <laughs> not, because you've got a good answer, haven't you? Yeah, we've already been up against the other seed in this heat, Suicidal Tendencies, and they've got a claw just as powerful as you. Yeah! What can I say? It's crunch time! Let the heat final begin! Champions, Razor, against very much the underdogs, Rick. A David and Goliath clash this. Roboteers, stand by. Kevin Gallagher, son Francis and Ian Aldridge have it all to do here with Rick. Against Vinnie Blood, Simon Scott and Ian Lewis. And of course against Sir Killalot in the arena. And not forgetting Shunt back again. A little hunger here for the competitors tonight from Shunt. Three, two, one, two, eight. Razor on the attack. Ooh, Rick opening up the front flipper and immediately exposing the electronics to Razor. Razor didn't go for that but went for the tyre. Exposed tyres, always going to be vulnerable. Razor also finding a chink there, getting between metal and tyre, chasing Rick across towards the arena sidewall. Huge crushability factor from the Razor B. Off comes Rick's plexiglass frame. In goes Razor with a slam and a crunch. Ugh. Rick, you've got to try and hold on somehow, but I'll tell you what, to get into this heat final, that's splendid again. They've opened that flipper to allow Razor to come in with an attack. But no doubt, young Francis and the controls will learn from this. In comes Shunt with an axe. Ooh, he looks in pain, and Aldridge, his friend there behind him, peering on as well. His machine certainly is in pain, and Razor now drags it forward. They try and lower that front flipper to escape from the razor beak and flip it away. That's neatly done there. Well done, young Francis. Key member of the scouts. Dip, 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 dop, dop, dop. Razor's just about done the job. Lifting and prizing. Not going yet for the pit release button. I thought they might do to end it prematurely. But they've certainly got Rick on the run and on the flames too. And watch out for Razor throughout this series. Yes, they're world champions, but they want the domestic UK title and they want it badly. Rick hurting badly, being captain out by the red bot. Only seconds remaining. Nine, ten the KO for Rick. Ian Aldridge, a big Formula One fan. Your machine never got off the starting grid, really, in this heat final against, well, a mean machine in Razor. And are we about to see Rick here flung through the air? We are an unworthy ending to a worthy heat finalist. <laughs> How can they enjoy seeing that? Great fun, though, and that's what Robot Wars is all about, too. Precise and skilled engineering. But let's not forget the laugh we have too. Sometimes at the expense of the house robots. That's what Razor's going for here, look. A little tickle on Sir Killalot from the Razor B. Razor, you may rue that later on in the series. Sir Killalot's blinking eyes. Half fury. Razor spinning away. 
They've beaten their wives and girlfriends and opponents and now taking on the house robots to in comes Sir Killalot with his great pincers fashioned from the jaws of life used by rescuers, firemen and the like to prise people away from wreckage and used there to dump Razor into the pit. Razor winners of course, but they won't like being in there at the end, or did they? Strange, some people on Robot Wars. Very strange. Don't play with the big boys, Razor. Don't play with the big boys. They might be in the pit, but they're through to the Surrey semi-finals. Fairly formidable robot army. Yeah, they've got some power. They've got some power. They went through you like a knife through butter. What about next time? Do you think you can um, improve the robot in any way? We'll give it a try. Yeah. Depends. You disappointed? Not really. We no. got this far. You did well. You got this far. You got to the heat final. But you're not in the series semi-finals. Never mind. Next time, mate. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it. Rick! Now. <laughs> you are becoming fairly unpopular boys, aren't you? Yeah. First well, of all, you trash your wife's machine. Yeah, we'll pay for that. You will pay for that in more ways than one. <laughs> and then, not only do you batter Rick, but then you start having a go at Sir Killalot. Oh, you got you can't have a go at a fat man, don't you? I mean, he's uh, a bit hey. of a fat boy, isn't he? Uh, hey. yeah. We right. said at the start of this series, we don't care whether we win or lose this year, we're just going for maximum carnage, and that's what we're giving. You've never won it, though. Surely you must want to win this competition. I would break it. No, You've won everything break. else. Well, now we'll break down. We, we push it so hard. You know, we've bent the arm squeezing those boys. Uh, hey. You know, it's got to be done, hasn't it? And then, you know, you mess with them, kill a lot, and you end up yeah. in the pit, mate. Has he got a long memory? He's got a long memory chip, mm. I tell you. Okay. A long memory chip. Elephant, <laughs> You're through to the series semis. That's the first. Yeah, yeah that's the first. It it's the first you've ever got on, we've gone in the UK time. Championship, so, hey, you never know, it could be your year. It could be your year. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Razor! <laughs> well, hospital drive those 4 by 4s but there's real off-roading on Robot Wars. Bye-bye!